Uh, that's probably going to be how all my interactive lesson plans will be for ending a segment. So what I will what I will always do is I will always provide you with enough resource and knowledge to where you can you know you can maneuver those on your own. Um, I noticed there were some questions about the destroy method, and I just want to go over real quickly and show you what your finished product should be if you did everything correctly, and then I'm going to go over how to implement what I have here if you had trouble. So when I go ahead and run it, you'll notice that I have a projectile, and then as soon as it goes off my screen, it deletes from the hierarchy. So how did I do this? Let's go ahead and look at my projectile script. So what we have in here is we have our projectile speed, which is the variable we were supposed to declare. My projectile speed is 7. Yours may be 3 or 4. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you're comfortable with. So then we have our start function, and that's going to where we're caching transform. So it doesn't use it every... Uh, pro so, that, so the process isn't using the transform method every update. And then when we go down here, we have the game object, and we're making the game object move up on the on its position, the Y position, and we're timesing it by our projectile speed, so it's going to do all of this at once, and then we're also going to do it in real time so we can watch it. So all of this is happening at once, and then destroy the object if the Y value is greater than 8. You should have created an if statement of game object with the position of Y greater than off the screen, which for me it was 8, and then you were supposed to look up the reference of game object, uh, destroy game object. So if you just type in destroy, you'll notice that there's something that says if a game object is if a game object equals game object then destroy game object and let me just go ahead and show you guys so for future reference you'll know how to do this go ahead and open up your uh, scripting reference and head over to scripting go ahead and type in destroy so what we have here is we have object dot destroy so in the description, we have removes a game object, component, or asset. Well, we have a game object. So what do we want to do? When we shoot the green thing and it goes off, the, when we shoot our laser and it goes off the screen, we want to delete that object. So let's go ahead and just read this a little. Uh, the object the object will be destroyed now or if a time is specified uh, in t seconds from now. If object is a component, it will remove the component from the game object. We don't need that. If object is a game object, here. If object is a game object, it will destroy the game object. Okay, so that sounds like what we need. So let's go ahead and look at their examples here. Go ahead and change this to uh, C sharp. And you'll notice that they have the examples how to use their method destroy. So they have destroyed uh, destroy game object, destroy, destroy rigid body, destroy game object with a, uh, with a timer. So we know that we want to destroy our game object. So what looks familiar here? We want to destroy, and then we want to we want to do what? We want to destroy our game object. So let's head back to Unity. And if you did everything correctly, what you should have done is you should have put if my transform .position .y, which is game object position y axis, is greater than off the screen, you would do destroy object, and then you would do a simple game object. And if you want, you can do this dot game object. All it is is clarifying this game object, but it's in this file, so it's not necessary. So if you did this, that's perfectly okay. Destroy object game object. That's simple. And you go ahead and save that, and you'll have the same results that I have here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we need to talk about our projectile and what it's going to do. What is our projectile for? It's to shoot at enemies and to destroy meteorites, correct? So we need physics in these games because when we shoot through, when we shoot at an object, it's not just going to collide or explode on that object. We want it to hit a rock or an enemy and make an explosion. So we do this by adding physics to the game where there's going to be colliders and there's going to be rigid bodies. So let's go ahead and just look at the projectile currently that you have. And you'll notice that it gives you a capsule collider. So what this is, is this means that it allows you to collide with other objects. But now we need something else. In order for an object to collide with another object, at least one of the objects have to have a rigid body. And the way to look at rigid body is it gives you mass, gravity, it, uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, the way to look at, uh, the way to look at a rigid body is it gives your character physics. Okay, it gives you physics, it gives you mass, it gives you gravity. So when we shoot our projectile upwards, we don't necessarily want gravity. We don't want that arrow coming back down, the laser coming back down. We want it to continue going. So go ahead and go to your projectile. You're going to go to component, go to physics, and then go to rigid body. 
And you'll see it over here. And what you want to do is you want to keep everything the same, but you want to uncheck gravity and then check is kinematic. Kinematic does is basically it says we don't want the physics engine taking place. We want to define our own physics through game code. So by hitting that, it's going to make sure there's no gravity and no physics involved. But we still need to have a rigid body in order to collide with an object. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do is we have our projectile, but we want to make it to where when our player hits space, it comes out of the player. Because right now, the projectile has its own value of where it shoots out of. So here's where we're going to make a prefab. And a prefab is basically a set of assets and scripts that control something that we can use in another script. So, in other words, and seeing as the laser is going to be our constant weapon, I'd pretty much say we're going to be reusing it. So in order to make this prefab, you have your projectile, and it's just a cube right now. So what you want to do, or the capstone, so what you want to do is you want to go down to your project file down here. You want to create a new folder, name it prefabs. And inside that, create a new prefab. And when you do that, all you're going to do is you're going to drag and drop your projectile into your prefab. And it's going to automatically create a prefab. And it's going to highlight blue in the hierarchy. So now, all your reusable objects are going to be blue. And this is perfect for, for instance, bullet games. Any, any game that has a gun and you're firing, you're going to use a, a bullet prefab. So when you go ahead and run it, it's blue, and it goes off the screen. So... We're at this part now where we have our prefab, but now we want to make it to where the prefab is only projectile when we hit the spacebar. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do that. What we want to do now is we want to make it to where when we hit the spacebar, our projectile fab uh, will launch. So in the hierarchy, go ahead and delete your projectile fab because it's just a prefab, so it's already in there. And what we need to do is we need to make it to where our player can when you hit the spacebar it has a projectile it will launch the projectile prefab so let's go ahead and open up our player class and see what our options are what we need to do first and let's, let's see if we can discuss what we need to do um, we need to add a we need to be able to reference our prefab so what we want to do is we want to make a variable a variable to reference prefab and what is a prefab, guys? Prefab equals game object. Okay, it's just a game object. It's a it's a it's a game object that has scripts, sounds, textures. It's basically a compact game object that can be reused over and over again. Uh, prefab equals game object, and we're just going to say reusable. So we need to make a variable that's going to reference a prefab, and we need it to equal. We know a prefab is a game object, so let's go ahead and create a variable. We're going to create a variable. We're going to name it game object and if you already start typing out I should finish it for you what this says is that we're gonna we're gonna declare a game object that's gonna call onto a prefab so we're gonna do public game object and then we're gonna uh, name it our projectile prefab so go ahead and type in projectile fab I named mine projectile fab you may have named yours projectile prefab that's okay too Go ahead and name it whatever you name the uh, prefab. So public game object projectile fab. Now let's just go ahead and save this and see what that did. You'll notice in the player hierarchy, if you go ahead and click it, you'll see your script and you have a player speed and then you have a projectile fab. Now what is your projectile fab? It's this down here. And we're looking at our player right now, we have none game object. So what if we just add our projectile fab to that? Just like this. Just drag and drop it up there. Now our projectile fab is in our player script and it's locating it. So we have our player speed of 5 and then we have our projectile fab which is using our projectile fab. And that's going to release our laser. So what's the next step? Let's head back into our player. What we want to do is we want to make it to where when we hit the space bar it's going to initiate the projectile fab. So open up your player, and this is where it's going to get hard, guys. I'm going to try and explain this as best as I can, and think of ways where if I didn't know how to do it, how would I have gotten it? Um, go ahead, and this is what we want to do. We want to, if the player presses down the spacebar, so what we want to do is this is going to be our area of code for spacebar. So 
Let's go ahead and do an if statement. And then what do we want in this if statement? So first, we know that we need to press space bar. So if the player presses down the space bar, then we want a projectile fab. So if presses down space bar, then here, fire projectile. All right, this is going to go, this is going to fire our projectile. This is the code that will fire it. So for our if statement, we need to do press down. So let's just look at a reference of what we used to use for, like, for instance, uh, moving left and right in the arrow keys. We used input docket axis horizontal. So let's go ahead and just check it out. Let's go to our input manager. Go to edit, project settings, input. And let's see what there is. See if there's an option. Okay, go to axes. Alright, so we got horizontal, vertical. We have fire one, fire two, fire three. Um, no. Right, let's check out fire one. Okay. So none of these are exactly what we want. There is no space here. So what can we do as an alternative? So we know how to make it vertical and horizontal, right? So assuming it's this, it's going to be similar to that, let's just go ahead and try that. What happens if we just start typing out that code? Input dot, remember we're getting the access. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, not get access. We know we need an input manager. If, if the horizontal and the player keys are in the input, let's go ahead and just start typing it out. So you have input. And then you'll notice we have get access, which we just saw the get access list. Jump, or I'm sorry, yeah, space bar is not in there. But we do have get button, get button down, get button up, get key down, and then we get get key up. Now what get key down says is that um, if we get a key down, if we hit the space bar down, then it's going to project it. So let's go ahead and do get key down. And we're going to string space. Okay? And that stands for spacebar. And if you wanted to look up how to do this, let's go ahead and look up uh, get key down in the reference manual just for a second and see what it tells us. Input.getKeyDown. Let's see, returns true during the frame, the user starts pressing down the key identified by the key key code enum parameter. Let's go ahead and check out an example. Okay, so here we go. Here's one for space. If input.getKeyDown, space, print, space key was pressed. So perfect. So that's exactly what we want. So head back into Unity. Open up your player thing. So we have input. So if input.getKeyDown, space, then we want to project how to fire. So this is where this is going to be really, you need to focus here. We're going to use a new method called instantiate. And when I think of what instantiate is and how you would know how to do this, I think of it as we know this is where our fire the laser code goes. And how do we do it? We, when we hit the space bar, what do we want to happen? We want to initiate our prefab, right? So I don't have a politically correct term for instantiate. Um, but basically it says that you want to instantiate an object. So you want to, you want to take, here, let me go ahead and write the code out. It might be easier. So what you want to do, guys, is you're going to type in instantiate, okay, instantiate, and then go ahead and just open up parentheses, and it's going to say object original. So what instantiate is doing is you're going to, you have your, when you press the space bar, you're going to instantiate an object, meaning that you're going to declare an object to come up. You're going to pop up. So you want to, well, basically, it's like ignition. You know, you're gonna ign you're gonna start the ignition for this object to come up. So what we do is we, it says object original. Well, what's our object that we want uh, instantiated? Prefab, right? So it's type in projectile prefab or projectile fab, and then let's just go ahead and save that. And I apologize, guys, if I completely just stuttered that and if you didn't understand it post below and I'll try and help you out there um, if you go ahead and just use the reference for instantiate you might be able to get a general idea of how to use it but just know that instantiate is how you use prefabs in order to launch a prefab you use an instantiate method it's something you'll have to remember so let's go ahead and uh, start our game and you'll notice we no longer have a prefab moving out and when we hit space, nothing happens. Hold on, Unix, uh, Unity exception, input key.named, space is unknown. 
Ooh, one second guys, sorry. Let's go ahead and check out our script. Input.get key down. Let's see. Input.get key down. Ooh, what am I missing? Key code? No, I don't think so. Key down. Keycode.space? Maybe. Hold on, what's the reference say? What did we determine the reference said? Input.get key down space. No, that should have worked. Why didn't that work? Let's go and look at our script here. Let's see, if input.get key down string space. And then we want to fire laser by instantiate projectile fab. And we have declared up here for game object, which is projectile fab. Hmm. Alright, let's go and run it. Input key named space is unknown. I'm not 100% sure why it's doing that. Let's go ahead and open up our project settings. Go to input. These are for joysticks. Uh, Fire 3. Uh, let's see, guys. Hold on. I'm missing something here. Oh, you know what? Just occurred to me. Give me a second. And you'll notice, guys, one thing about being a game content developer or programmer, it's all about trial and error. So don't ever get stressed, because if you get stressed, then you're going to have an awful time with learning to program. Um, where is... Let's see. If input... If input dot get key down space... Instantiate projectile fab. Uh, Unity exception. Input key named space is unknown. Well, onion named space, no. What is wrong with this? Get key down key key code boolean. Description returns true during the frame. Let's say so if key. Oh, I guess, okay, key code dot space. We should be able to use this one. I'm honestly not too sure why it's not working right now, but we'll go ahead and use um, key code dot space. So let's go ahead and open up Unity again. Open up your player script. And we'll head down to input dot get key down. And then we're going to do key code. Keycode.space. Okay, and that should do the same thing as what I tried to do originally. Go ahead and save it. Our error should be gone. And you'll notice that I can now do this. I can shoot. But now one more thing you're going to notice is that I can move my cube, but my projectile is still there. So how do we make it to where when I move, the projectile will follow, the prefab will follow to where I'm currently positioned. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, and then I'm going to go ahead and talk about how we can go about creating the projectile fab to follow the player. And this is where it's going to be another interactive learning, and you're going to do it yourself. Thanks for watching.